Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Let amen. the church say amen. Let the amen. redeemed of the Lord say so. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. There amen. is none other like the Lord. Praise God. I want to welcome you all to the online church. I see you out there, so many of you, and we just give God the praise. As the singer sang his song, there is a bomb in Gilead. That means there's a healing, there's a doctor in the house, there's a physician in the house. Rachel, Sarah, there's a physician in the house. Tell your husband, get ready to get healed. Get ready to get healed. There is a physician in the house. His name is Jesus. I want to give a shout out to all of you. Hey, Terry in Colorado, there is a bomb in Gilead. There's healing coming your way. <clears throat> Ryan and all the people up in Pennsylvania, there's healing in the land. Praise God. Dustina, Dustina, praise God. We heard about you. We heard about you. I saw your testimony on Facebook, how you and your family drove all the way. 10 hours to Waycross, Georgia, and got healed and got blessed. We're going to ask you to give a testimony in a few moments. We praise God. Thank you for Nathan. Thank you for Michael. Thank you for uh, Destiny. Thank you for Nikki. Thank you. Hey, my niece, Waynette. <clears throat> we give a shout out to you, Waynette, and to all the veterans, all the veterans. Happy Thanks. Veterans Day. Praise Thanks. God. Rachel, Sarah, Jackie Fisher, Zizla, so many of you. We give a shout out to you. And if I miss your name, charge it to my head and not to my heart. We welcome you to the online church where Jesus is Lord. He's moving mightily by his spirit. Today is a day of healing. God told me today, expect healing. Expect healing. And so we praise God. We thank God. Expect healing. Healing today, praise God. Dustina, praise this prayer. We want to share it. The prayer, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we humbly come before your throne, <laughs> giving you praise for all that you do, you are, do, and have done. Lord Jesus, thank you for the love, mercy, and grace you show upon us every day. Lord, we lay our burdens at your feet and ask for forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we come to you asking for healing for Rachel Sarah's husband, that you lay hands on him, forgive any sins he has confessed. And we are praying and declaring that pain be gone <clears throat> in Jesus' name. Thank you for already taking care of it, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We pray that prayer of agreement. We pray that prayer of agreement. And we rebuke that pain, that that uh, uh, infirmity that's come upon him by the authority of the name of Jesus. Satan, take your hands off Rachel Sarah's husband in the name of Jesus. Loose him. Let him go. We break your assignment against him, Satan. We release you from him in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. You are the healer, God. There's none other like you. God, there, you are the bomb in Gilead. There's a doctor in the house. There's a man at the river giving sight to the blind. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. We praise you. Let us go into the house of the Lord. We come in with thanksgiving and joy and praise in our hearts, and we give you glory and honor, God, because you are the mighty God. There is none other like you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We are witnesses of your healing power, Lord. We are witnesses of your power to deliver. We are witnesses of your mercy and your grace. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Well, believers, we come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for this wonderful, great, anointed online church and for the online churches. We thank you for online. Well, we thank you for the whole church. Praise God. We just don't feature the online church, but we utilize the online church to the praise of your glory. As we connect with the mainline church, the brick and mortar, as we 
press against and charge against the gates of hell that they will not prevail against the church. And we thank you, Father, and we bless you. We bless all of these who have come, Lord, faithfully to worship you and to fellowship with one another. We thank you, Lord, for how they are ministering to one another, even in the chat room. We thank you, Father, that you are in our midst. We feel your presence, God. We know you're here, and we honor you, Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit, we surrender. We yield to you. Let your will be done today. Move mightily, Holy Spirit, and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. My friends, I pray that you'll tell more people about the online church. Tell them that there's a place where they can come and fellowship and be healed and worship God and give God the praise without commercials. Praise God. We don't disrupt your praise and worship with commercials and begging and begging for money and talking nonsense and, and, and stupid stuff. We just praise God that we can come together and we can fellowship and we can honor the Holy Spirit. And, and be in his presence as he moves in our midst. We worship God. We bless God. And we thank God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's give a, a, a shout out to uh, our friend Dustina. We're going to ask Dustina to come on and just give us a testimony. Then we're going to ask Nathan to follow with a testimony of what they experienced in Waycross, Georgia. Come on in, Dustina. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Church. Good morning. Praise God. God bless you. Well, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> it was an amazing trip. I, the devil done everything he could that morning to try and stop us to go. My alarm did not go off, so we were running at least an hour and a half behind. Um, cars pulling out in front of us. The Lord was trying to take us out before we even got started that day. You mean Satan um, was trying to take you out before you got started? Absolutely. <laughs> he he knew what was coming, and he was trying to stop God's blessing, but we prayed through it. We got through it, through the storms, everything. We made it. It was a 10-hour drive down. The first night we got there, um, we got up to the front, and... I was asking for prayer, for healing, for my thyroid and sciatica, and there was a lady that we had just prayed over a few minutes before that, and she received healing. She was dancing. She was the Holy Spirit filled, and I felt a sensation in my leg while Brother Mike was prophesying and speaking to me. And I was like, what is this feeling in my leg? It, I, I'm starting to feel pain go away. And it started out as heat, and then it was like a tingling and cooling sensation just moving all the way up. And I turned, and I looked to, to see who was rubbing my back. I was like, somebody's touching me right now. And I turned and looked, and it was the lady that had just received healing and was touched by the Lord before that we'd prayed for. And I turned and I looked at Brother Mark, and I said, I just got touched by God through her. The Holy Spirit was still in her. And so they continued, and they after he got done, they prayed over me, and I could feel it all coming up through my legs from my toes all the way up. We had an amazing service. We saw people get delivered. We saw healing. People were slain in the spirit. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever witnessed in my life. After the service, we went back to the hotel, and my upper back was in a lot of pain from all the standing and leaning and praying. And Michael asked me, he's like, "Would you? do you want an ibuprofen for your back? I said, are you crazy? I said, no way. I said, the Lord just touched me. I said, he's not done yet. I said, he's still working, and I'm declaring healing in Jesus' name. I said, I said, you don't undo what God did. <laughs> so I'm just going to sit here and wait on him and praise him. And sure enough, within 20 minutes, the whole sensation went up to the top of my head. All pain through my body was gone, and I slept like a baby. And I, I'm still praising Jesus because we drove 11 hours back home, and i done most of the driving so he could sleep because he had to work the next day. And I had no pain 
whatsoever, where usually if I'm sitting more than 30 minutes, I'm in excruciating pain. So praise Jesus, I am still healed in here oh lord I, I can't stop sharing i can't stop shouting and praising him brother it's amazing it's amazing Dustina, Dustina got healed y'all she got healed praise god mike said can i give you an ibuprofen she said no man no man what's the matter with you god's not finished with us yet praise <laughs> god we thank Amen. God. Thank God for Mike. Thank God for your family. Nathan's on the wings. We're gonna bring Nathan on in a moment. Praise God with his testimony. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all right to go crazy for Jesus. We're in church, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to just sit there and look look uh pompous. We can just shout out, give a shout out to the Lord right where you are on your cell phone. Give God a shout out. We serve the mighty God. He's the healer. There's a healer in the house, y'all. There's a healer in the house. Dustina and her husband and family drove 11 hours. They and down here in the Georgia. I had sent a message. Hey, stop by Atlanta if you're in the area. But they were on, they were on a mission. So I understand. Praise God. They got their blessing. The, the songwriter said, she laid hold to the word. She laid hold to the word, and it worked for her. It worked for her. They laid hold to the word of God, and it worked to her. I hope you're listening, Rachel, Sarah. I hope your husband's near the phone so he can hear. They laid hold to the word of God. They believed the word of God, and the word of God healed them. Praise God. With his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Let's bring Nathan on. Let's, give Nathan, let's get Nathan's take on everything. Come on in, Nathan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um. Well, how, what do I even begin? Three days there, there's been a lot going on. <laughs> um. Okay. First day when we went there, um, we got to the hotel, and after that, we just got ready for church. Then we went there and. We got confused on where we were going, and we found the church. My mom's like, well, there's a house down there with a lot of cords and lights. My dad's like, well, don't know. And my mom's like, I can feel in my guts. God's telling me that's the church. So we went down there, and it was. First night, there were women dancing, and and they said last year there were women throwing their canes up in the air singing and shouting their lungs out. Pulling their walkers down. <laughs> they were healed. <laughs> and he asked me to go up there, and he asked me to pray for everybody, and there was this one man who wanted a lot of prayer for his son because his son, he didn't like God, and... He didn't believe in him. He was watching all these scary movies. And then I just prayed over him, and I just felt the Holy Spirit in him. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's and, my main man, Nathan, y'all. That's Nathan, y'all. That's Nathan, y'all. Did y'all hear what he said? He's only 12 years old. He prayed over the man. He felt the Holy Spirit in the man. That's walking by faith, ladies and gentlemen. That's walking by faith. The scripture says we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Rachel, Sarah, we shall lay hands on the sick. We lay hands on your husband right now. In the name of Jesus, we cast out that spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus, Nathan said we lay, we prayed over him and he felt the Holy Spirit. That's a 12-year-old talking, ladies and gentlemen. That's not an 80-year-old man talking. That's a young, a young man talking. And yeah. a young man who's got his trust in the Lord. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, well, Mike, for taking your family to Waycross, Georgia. You know, they got in the car 
all, all hell try to break out against them. The devil try to prevent them from getting to their destiny, but they pressed on. They laid hold. They laid hold to the word of God. They laid hold to the word of God. God told them to go to Waycross, Georgia. They drove from Tennessee to Georgia. Eleven hours, ladies and gentlemen. Eleven hours. They pressed to get their blessing. They pressed. They didn't just sit down and take it. They didn't just sit down and let sciatica and that everything else come against them they said we're going to get in the car and and the traffic was rough satan tried to take them out through uh, accidents and all that but god had a hedge around them that's how you press to get your blessings ladies and gentlemen we just don't sit down and take what the devil has for us we fight we fight with the weapons of the lord if it means getting in your car and driving 10 hours to a destined place that god has laid out for you do it and obey the Lord. Do what God says do, and God will do his, his best. Let me tell you what happened in the Carter family this week. My wife Jackie was uh, rear-ended this week. For the second time in eight days, she was rear-ended. She was rear-ended. A car ran into the back of her. A car ran into the back of her for the second time in eight days, in eight days. Hey, Wes, get on your cell phone, then you can hear, okay? A car ran into the back of her, and in two times in eight days, she's been rear-ended in a car. And on election day, I backed up my truck, and I didn't see a car through that blind spot in that mirror. I just put a dent, a little scratch on the car, there was another fender bender in the same place, a lady trying to walk into the polls to vote. She tripped right in front of me and fell on her face. The devil tripped her. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil tried to mess over people this past week, tried to prevent Dustina and Mike and their family from getting to Waycross, Georgia, but the devil is a liar. Do you hear me, Wayne Ed Cox? The devil is a liar. Do you hear yes, me, sir, Hallelujah. Up in Idaho, the devil is a liar. Do you hear me, West in New Jersey? The devil is a liar. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Nathan said he met this woman who was healed of dementia. No weapon. The devil was trying to kill her through dementia, but God delivered her. Ladies and gentlemen, this week the devil unloaded his cannons against a lot of people. He tried to take Jackie out for the second time in two, in a week's time. And Jackie was said, well, she was she was shaking and trembling when I got to the scene, and she was crying, and, and while she was praising the Lord and crying at the same time, later on she said, you know something, we must be doing something right. When she said that, I said, hallelujah, yes, we are. We're leading the online church, and we're praising God, and we're helping people to praise God. The devil hates what we're doing. Justina, he hates what you're doing. Christy Carpenter, he hates what you're doing. Wes, he hates what you're doing. Rachel Sarah, he hates what you're doing. In Michigan, he hates it. He hates it. He hates what Mike Johnson is doing in Waycross, Georgia. But the devil is a liar. The Bible says, Jackie Fisher, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We praise God. We praise God. We praise God. And so let's get into a word. I just feel like preaching today. Hope you all don't mind if I preach a little bit today. Praise God. I hope you don't mind if I preach just a little bit today because the God has given us a word. We praise God for the testimonies. I want to bring Zisla on just for a moment so she can give a testimony What's happening down in Texas? Zisla, come on and say hello to us. Hello, Pastor Carter. This hey, is Zisla from Middleton, Texas. God bless you also. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see. I was trying to remember which testimony that I needed to describe. Um, I know just recently on Sunday that uh, we had... Oh, you know, well, I had we've had some bad things happen in, in Texas where on the Wednesday of last week, 
we had a, a coworker uh, die of a heart attack, and um, and and so that's where it could be, you know, the the devil, you know, trying to hurt uh, the people that work around us, and uh, so just right on the same floor, like in a different department, you know, but just someone that I would walk by and see every day has passed away from a heart attack, so it was very sad. And then uh, this Sunday, uh, not not today, but last Sunday, I found out that uh, the, the wife of uh, one of the lectors that I also uh, work with or that, that I see do readings, uh, you know, on church on Sunday, we you know, we read in Mass, and then that's when his wife was hit with a stroke. And so that's where it's like, oh, no, another person afflicted. And so we're asking, you know, for like the hedge of thorns, you know, to be put around her and for, you know, the demons to be bound and for health to go into her body. And um, so so those are the things, you know, that we've been seeing around us, you know, and we're trying to fight away the demons and rebuke rebuke, rebuke the devil and things like that. Praise God. Zisper, thank you for that excellent report. Thank you, Zisla, that you're standing on the wall in the name of Jesus. The Bible says if any two of us touch agree, and agree upon anything we ask the Lord in the name of Jesus, that he will do. And we stand in agreement with you for the people you're praying for, for healing and for those situations in Texas. And we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Nathan said yes. uh, a, a woman was prayed for. She had cancer. She was taking pills, and, and God delivered her from cancer. Hallelujah. Ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen, mm -hmm. we serve a mighty God. I mean, God is just waiting to heal today. He's looking for someone to heal. The scripture says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to, to show himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect, Toward him, hey Christy Carpenter, God's eyes are running into Idaho. He he he's running into Idaho. Idaho. He wants to prove himself strong in Idaho, in Washington, in Oregon, coming down the coast into California, coming across to Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, all the way to Texas, then Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, on up into Georgia. Uh, uh, down to Florida, up the East Coast, South Carolina, North Carolina. Don't forget Tennessee and Kentucky, up into West Virginia, uh, uh, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and, and New York, Maine. And he's not forgotten any of you, wherever you are. He's in Michigan, Rachel Sarah. He's in Michigan. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He knows what you have need of. Just trust in him and learn how to wait. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, open your Bibles or download Isaiah 54, 17. We're going to look at Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah 54, 17. Here's a word from the Lord. Here's a word from the Lord. The word of the Lord is truth. God says it, he will perform it. He's just looking for someone to stand on his word and to wait patiently and let him have his way. The word of God says, and this is for you, those of you who are going through difficulties, those of you who are meeting against challenges, uh, this is for my wife Jackie, for me, uh, uh, Satan trying to take her out of the scene uh, with two collisions, and, and he's doing things in your life, but look, listen to the word of God. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Hey, Rachel, Sarah, up in Michigan, the word of God says, no weapon that is formed against you and your husband shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage. You have inherited this. You're a joint heir of God with Jesus Christ. You have inherited what Christ has given to us, what God has given because Jesus died on the cross. Jesus obeyed his Father even unto death, 
Jesus won the victory over death and the grave. He arose from the grave. He obeyed his father. He said, all power is in my hands. He said, I give you the keys to the kingdom of God. This is the inheritance that you have. This is the heritage of the saints of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. God has declared us to be the righteousness of God. No matter what your neighbors think about you, no matter what your family thinks about you, Christy, you are the righteousness of God. Your husband is the righteousness of God. Your children are the righteousness of God. No matter what they say about you, Nathan, in school, you are the righteousness of God. God has declared you righteous. Waynette Cox, no matter what people may say about you or think about you, God looks at you this way. He says, you are the righteousness of God. He has declared you righteous because of your trust in him. Hey, Wes, my son from uh, New Jersey, you are the righteousness of God. God's got his mighty hand upon you. He's got a plan for your life. Ladies and gentlemen, God says, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. So just learn how to wait on him. Hey, Jeep girl out in Colorado, God knows the plans he has for you. Despite your friends and others trying to block you, trying to prevent you from being what you can be, despite any attack, ladies and gentlemen, that Satan can put on you, he does not have the permission, he does not have the permission of God to harm you. God will keep you. He will keep you. The blood of Jesus covers us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Let me tell you this, then I get into the word. Yeah, I'm going to preach eventually, uh, uh, Christy. I'm going to preach. But let me just tell you, three weeks ago, the Lord said to me, Satan wants to sift you. He's going to come after you like he did Peter, like he did Job. He said, but don't be afraid. He said, because Satan has asked permission to sift you, to challenge you. And I wanted to say, well, God, I hope you said no, don't give me permission. But God said, I've given him permission to sift you and to challenge you. So he said, Satan's going to come after you. He's going to come after Jackie. That was three weeks ago. Two weeks ago, Jackie was rear-ended. Last week, just a couple of days ago, she was rear-ended again. And, and Satan tried to take her out in two different automobile accidents. I was involved in a little fender bender, just a little scratch on the other person's car. Nobody was hurt. And, and I knew then, God said to me, I told you Satan is coming after you. And I told you that I have you covered. So don't worry about it. Walk in faith. And so as I ministered to Jackie at the scene of the first accident and at the scene of the second accident, I reminded her the devil is, has, has challenged us. He's coming after us. And, and he hates this ministry. The devil hates this Back to Basics online church. He hates the fact that uh, we're, we're ministering to people and you're being raised up in the power of God. And, and you're getting bold enough to get in your car and drive 11 hours so that you can get blessings and be a blessing to others. That you can pray for somebody with cancer and they can get delivered. The devil hates this kind of ministry. This is not your brick and mortar church ministry. This is a worldwide ministry where God is using you, Ryan Trogler. He's using you, Jackie Fisher, to reach out to people like you've never done before, and you're seeing the results of the Lord. So this is your inheritance. You have inherited this. God has given to this, this to you. He said, we are joint heirs of God with Jesus Christ. The same power that God has given to Jesus he is now given to us. Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel, Sarah, there is no reason why your husband will continue to be in pain or, or to be sick. There's no reason, Dustina, why that sciatica can control you because you have a heritage from God. You have an inheritance. You speak the word on it. If that sickness tries to come back on you, Dustina, if that pain comes back, you say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You rebuke that pain in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, out of your our mouths flow the issues of life. Out of our heart flow the issues of life. Speak on it. Speak God's word. Hey, listen, when you speak God's word, 
the word of God not only leaves your mouth, but it reaches even up into the heavenlies. When you speak God's word against a situation or put God's word on a situation, the word of God that leaves your mouth, ladies and gentlemen, reaches even up to the heavenlies. That is why demons hate it when you pray. Demons hate it when you, when you cast out whole, uh, demonic spirits. Demons hate it when you proclaim uh, victory. Demons hate it when you preach the word of God. They tremble. They want you to sit there and don't say anything. They want you to sit there and be depressed. Demons want you to sit there and be introspective. Demons want you to sit there and be uh, antisocial. Demons want you to sit there and be dumb. Demons want you to sit there and take their mess. But no, 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 no. God has given you power. He's given you authority. Speak his word. Wayne, put your word on it. Put your word, put the word of God on it. You say, devil, it is written. I don't care how much the pain uh, comes against you, how, how terrible it feels. You put the word of God. You say, pain, spirit, in the name of Jesus, I command that you leave me. Sciatica, I command that you leave me. You can bind those demons. The Bible says, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Well, how do you bind something, Pastor Carter? You bind it by opening your mouth and putting the word of God on it. You speak to that situation or that personality or that thing that's happening to you, even though you may not know what it is, you speak to it. You speak to whatever that symptom is. And you say, pain, I bind you by the authority of the name of Jesus. Pain, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Pain, I command that you go back to hell. Go to the abyss. And you, can, you will see that pain leave. The scripture says, whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That means that when we bind a demon, that demon is bound. And God backs it up. God backs it up. The angels of the Lord encamp around them that fear God and deliver us. The angels of the Lord will not let that demon attack you for much, so much longer. He's got to, that demon has to leave. When you command it to leave, it's got to leave. That's why, Nathan, we can command cancer to leave somebody's body. That's why, Nathan, we can speak to uh, the children in the school and command them to love one another, that Muslim and Christian children can go to school together without fighting. We can speak to that situation. We can speak to any situation and command that change come because God has given us the keys to the kingdom. Jesus said, I, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, there are millions of Christians today sitting on power kegs powder kegs, and, 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 and we're sitting on explosives, and all we have to do is speak the word, and, and we can explode healing into somebody else's life. Millions of Christians need this kind of teaching. They're not getting this kind of teaching. Millions of believers are sitting up in church right now getting those bless me, stroke me uh, <coughs> sermons, but they're not getting any power. God wants to give power to his people. God wants to give power to you. He's already given it to you. And how do you use this power? By opening your mouth and putting the word of God on any situation. That's what Jesus did in the wilderness. When the devil said, if you're the son of God, command that these stones be made in the bread. Jesus put the word of God on that situation. He says, Satan, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When the devil tried to tell Jesus uh, to give up his mission and serve the devil in his kingdom, the devil said, if you are the son of God, then uh, uh, jump off this high mountain. It is because it's written, you know, that the angels of the Lord will protect you. And, the, and Jesus said, devil, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. When the devil came against Jesus, and said, look at all those kingdoms. I'll show you the world's kingdoms. If you bow down before me, I'll give you the world's kingdom. Now the devil's tempting God. God is the creator of all things. Jesus said, Satan, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And Jesus said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Get thee behind me. 
That's the way Jesus fought his battles, and that's the way we're to fight our battles. When the devil tries to take us out in a car collision, we've got to put the Word of God on it. And don't be afraid to drive. Don't be afraid to go where God sends you to do. You've got a hedge around you. The angels of the Lord encamp around about them that believe. The devil wants to bind us up in fear and paralysis. Let me talk to you about some of the weapons that Satan uses. I'm going to give you ten weapons. I'm going to give you a list of ten weapons that Satan uses, and he uses them effectively. I'm going to mention three of them today. We're going to take four of them next week, or well, week after next. Next week we have a special treat. We've got Andrew Hawkins, one of our young students in the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy. Andrew's going to be bringing the message next week, so I want you to tune in. And, and listen to what this young man has to say, what God put on his heart. And then uh, two weeks from now, we're, we will resume with Satan's favorite weapons and how no weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is a series, uh, part one today, on no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Let's listen to this list of, of, of weapons that Satan uses against people, and he's using them effectively. But after uh, the next couple of weeks, when you hear these messages and learn how to operate in the Word of God, no longer will Satan be able to uh, uh, come against you and hinder you with these weapons. Here are his favorite weapons. Number one is deception. Lies and deception. One of his most favorite weapons is lies and deception. Number two, distractions. Oh, he loves to distract people from God. Number three, delays. Delays. If he can get people to wait till they're tired of waiting, then he can cause people to lose faith. So number, the first three are deception, distractions, Delays. Number four, disappointment. Disappointment, a powerful weapon that the devil uses against people. Number five, discouragement. Discouragement. Number six, depression. Depression. <laughs> Satan is shutting down a lot of believers with depression. Depression. We're going to work with this in a couple weeks. Number seven, debt. Debt, D-E-B-T. If the devil can get you in debt, then he can, he can practically get you to do almost anything for some money. This is a powerful weapon the devil's using. We're going to work with that one too. And number seven, sickness and disease. We're talking about a big boy, sickness and disease. The devil has tried to shut people down. He's paralyzed a lot of people. He's caused a lot of people to lose faith because of sickness and disease. But we're going to take a look at sickness and disease and look at that demon out of the water. Number nine, doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief. This is probably one of the most important weapons Satan is using against the church. Doubt and unbelief. People hear the word, but they don't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, when you believe the word and act on the word, God moves quickly. And the number 10, number 10 on our list is fear. Fear. Now, I, I really want to start with number 10 first and then go from fear to doubt and unbelief, then to sickness and disease, and come down uh, uh, that way. But no, God said, take them in the order in which I've given them to you. And so today, and only for a few minutes, we're going to talk about the first three weapons Satan uses. Deception distractions, and delays. Deception. We see this in the Garden of Eden. Satan deceived Adam and Eve. Now look, look, look. God's word is true. Rachel Sarah, God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And that's all you need to know concerning sickness. I am the Lord that healeth thee. God said it. And God's word will not return it to him void. 
God is not a man that he should lie. God said it. But here's what Satan does. Satan will work on somebody's mind and deceive you and try to get you to think. The God, God doesn't mean that. Well, look, what he, look what he did with Aunt Susie. Look what he did with Uncle Homer. Pastor. Pastor. I think he's got a smoothie. Uh, Volume down, I keep hearing. But the Bible gives you a backup to uh, the Word of God. He gives you a backup word. And he says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And he gives you another backup uh, where it says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not made out of flesh and blood. They're not made by human hands, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So everything the devil says against the word of God is a stronghold. It's a, it's a thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. But if you entertain the devil's thoughts, then he can pull you off the word of God. And he's being effective against a lot of Christians to pull them off the word of God. I mean, God himself said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jesus, the word of God says in Isaiah, with his stripes we were healed. Jesus already paid the price. But if we listen to the devil, I mean, he can easily, methodically, day by day, pull us away from the word of God if we're willing to listen to him. And so we've got to stay on the word of God. The songwriter said about the woman with the issue of blood, she laid hold on the word, she laid hold on the word, and it worked for her. It worked for her. She was healed. And when you lay hold on the word, in other words, don't let anything or anybody, no demon, no, no power, no principality, no rule of spirit, not even your mama or your daddy, not even your son or daughter, not even your husband or wife, if they're speaking stuff contrary to the word of God, you've got to rebuke it and stand on the word of God. Here's what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, some of us, we get on Facebook, we get on Twitter, we, we get on online, uh, we get on the social media, and, 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 and we, we listen to Pastor so-and-so and Brother so-and-so, and, and, and we take everything they're saying word for word. But if they're saying anything contrary to the word of God, it's coming from the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, stand on the word of God. No matter how short that pain may be, no matter how long-lasting it is, when God says, I'm the Lord that healeth thee, Wayne, then I know he's going to heal me. If God says, I, I'm the one who protects you, I know he's going to protect you. When God says, the angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him, then I know I can drive 11 miles to Waycross, Georgia, and the angels of the Lord are going to help me to get there, they're going to protect me. They're going to keep me from those crazies out there that are driving, going to keep me from sickness, going to keep me from the storm. And, and Dustina and her family are witnesses of that. Stay on the word. And so the devil used deception, and it was through deception that Adam and Eve gave up the keys to the kingdom. Adam lost his calling, lost his favor with God. Adam could have lived forever, but he disobeyed God. He sinned. Don't let the devil deceive you. Believe what God says. Believe the word of God in the name of Jesus. When Satan puts whispers stuff in your ear, and he'll use anybody he can to try to throw you off. He'll use, he'll use your, your spouse. He'll use a member of your family. Anything coming out of somebody's mouth that is not of the Lord that is contrary to the word of God. I don't care how pretty they are, how handsome they are, how rich they are, how much you like them or love them. If it is not of the Lord, you need to rebuke it. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You tell them, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Pastor Paul Bigley had, had me a call a man uh, last week. This man was harassing the, the, the Paul Begley ministry, he was coming online every day, and he was cursing and cussing. It was wit he was a witch. 
And uh, he would call Pastor Paul, Sister Heidi, and curse them out and, and call Katz and call uh, uh, Tanya, uh, who's answering Heidi's phone, and, and, and just beating up on them. And so Pastor Paul sent me his phone number and said, talk, talk to this guy. Pastor Paul was believing there's still hope that this guy can get saved. And there still is. But I called the man, and he started challenging me. He started uh, going on, and, oh, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, 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 you got the wrong guy. You don't cuss this guy. You don't curse this guy. You got the wrong guy. Hey, look, I'm a former Green Beret, ladies and gentlemen, and, and I don't use the M16 anymore. I don't throw hand grenades, and I'm not going to plant an explosive behind under your house like we did in the military. But now I will plant an explosive of the Word of God. I'm a Green Beret for Jesus. I will plant the explosive in you, and the, the explosive will be the Word of God. So this guy started challenging me. He was nasty. He was vicious. And every time he'd ask me a question, I said, well, the Bible says. Then he got to a point, he said, wait a minute. He said, we're going to call. I mean, if you're going to talk to me, I want to know your opinion. You're going to talk to me, man to man. He said, I don't, I don't want to hear what the Bible says. Why are you saying what the Bible says? I said, because I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. I know you, devil. I know you're scared of the word of God, so I'm going to answer you with the word of God. Before long, that guy was so angry. He was so mad. And I said, by the way, you stop calling the Paul Bakley prophecy. You stop interfering with that ministry. You stop coming against that ministry. You stop calling Heidi Bakley. You stop cussing out those women. You want to pick on somebody, pick on me. I'm a man. I'm a man of God. Pick on me. Christ is in me, the hope of glory. He got so mad. He said, I'll be calling you back. I said, well, you may. I said, by the way, and if you want to call me back to get saved, you can get saved. But if you're going to call me back with some mess, I will stand against you in the name of Jesus. And then I spoke to the man, and I said, devil, the Lord rebuke you. I called out the devil that was in him. I said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Loose hey. this man and let him go. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the way we've got to fight. We can't hate people. And we, our enemy is not people, but we do not sit around and let people say anything they want to say and do what they want to do. The Word of God is in us. The Holy Ghost is in us. He, he, he lives in us like rivers of living water. The second uh, uh, weapon Satan uses is distractions. Oh, he knows how to distract. Nathan, the devil can take a young 12-year-old boy like you who's powerful in the Lord, who loves Jesus, and he'll bring a, 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 a pretty little 11-year-old girl up in your face, and she'll just, hi, Nathan. Oh, you look so cute today. And, and of, of course your heart's going to flutter, Nathan. Nathan, yes, you are. You are handsome, but she's going to be batting her eyes and just, here, Nathan, I, bought, I brought lunch for you today. Uh, uh, you don't have to buy your lunch. I brought it for you today. And uh, Nathan, will you be my, my boyfriend? And this and that. But if she's not of the Lord, Nathan, I don't care how pretty she is, how, how curly her hair, her ear, hair is, and how sweet her voice sounds. It's a distraction. Many people in the church have been torn down, brought down, because many people have been uh, torn down because they have been distracted. Don't let distraction uh, pull you down. Can you still hear me, Ryan? Ryan, can you still hear me? Yes, Pastor Carter, I can hear you, but there's a lot of people on here saying that you can't, they can't hear you. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, you and there's lots of static. Okay, let's continue. Don't let any distraction. Many powerful men and women of God, I'm talking about, I'm, and I'm talking about people I know, Holy Ghost filled people, tongue talkers, people with the gift of healing and deliverance. deliverance. Many have been brought down because Satan distracted them. Satan will use a man to bring down a powerful woman of God. Satan will use a woman to bring down a powerful man of God. Satan even uses men today to pull down men and women to pull down women. Satan will use money, lust, the, eye, the uh, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the cares of the world. I mean, money 
has been the thing that has torn down a lot of people. I've seen a lot of powerful ministries go south, go down, because they got greedy for money. They got greedy for power. They had to try to manipulate and control people's lives. Ladies and gentlemen, stay on the Word of God. Don't let anything distract you. I've seen a lot. This And this is one I've seen much, much of. I've had young ladies come to me and say they want to get married. Uh, Pastor, will you marry me and my fiancé? Now, I haven't met the dude yet. Uh, yes, bring him to meet me. And, 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 and uh, oh, well, he says he, he'll come to church after we get married. Oh, no, no, no. See, that's a lie straight from hell. I have never yet met a man who said he was going to come to church after he got married. I have never yet met a man <clears throat> who fulfilled that promise. And I've counseled many young ladies uh, and said, don't marry him until he comes to church and gets some counseling. He needs to get Jesus. But um, that's the way it is. Don't let any distractions keep you, prevent you from getting God's blessings. The third thing we want to talk about is delays. Delays. We'll finish up with delays, and we'll finish with this. We'll complete this list in two more weeks, work on it more. Many people get uh, thrown off base, off course, because of delays. In other words, they put a time limit on God. God says, uh, tribulation works patience, and patience works experience and experience hope and so many people want an instant God it's like they God their God is like Alka-Seltzer plop plop fizz fizz oh what a relief it is if 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 Jesus doesn't heal me tonight I'm going back on drugs in the morning or if Jesus doesn't heal me tonight I'm going back and have sex with with so-and-so's wife tomorrow no and 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 God is nothing to play with, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -uh. He says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Nobody can heal you but the Lord. There's no other way to be healed. There's no other way to be delivered. You can go to AA. You can go to uh, 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 a drug rehab. You can go to these programs. Uh, but they do not heal you. They give you a sustaining program. And they give you uh, people uh, uh, who, who will help be your support personnel. But you need the power of the Holy Ghost to be healed and delivered. And so, yet, people become so uh, uh, impatient. They uh, will throw God out the window because God didn't come when they wanted to. Well, I, 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 took, I, I, I went to church for six weeks. And nothing happens. Well, going to church, you can go to church 18 times a day, 365 days a year, and nothing's going to happen if you don't put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Going to church never heals anybody. Going to church never saves anybody. Getting baptized does not heal anybody. Getting uh, baptized never heals anyone. Joining the church never heals anybody. You must be born again. And when you're born again, if you're truly born again, you're going to put your trust in the Lord. Because if you're truly born again, you know that all that stuff you depended on before you got born again was a deception from the devil. And why go back to that stuff that wasn't helping you in the first place? That liquor, that dr those drugs, those women, those men, that homosexuality, uh, that lying, that greed for money. That lifestyle was killing you, and then you got saved, and now all of a sudden, you're going to let Satan pull you back. You're going to let your friends pull you back. You're going to let your relatives pull you back. No, not here, ladies and gentlemen. No, I've been there. I know the power of God to deliver. I know that there's only one way to be saved, and that's through Jesus Christ. And look, I'm not one of those preachers who preaches once saved, always saved. Because there are so many people who got saved and let their guards down. And I'm saved now, so I can go back to drink the liquor because I'm saved. I got my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't believe that deception. If you're saved, then you walk in holiness. You walk in righteousness. You say no to sin. You rebuke the devil. And when it comes to 
those delays, you learn how to wait on the Lord. The scripture says, I waited patiently on the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit. Out of a <coughs> I know people going through depression right now. But if they just wait on the Lord, God will deliver. He said, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. He said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Well, we've got a list of, of, of things we deal with. Next time we'll look at disappointment, discouragement, depression, and death. And then we'll look at sickness and disease. Then we're going to look at doubt and unbelief. Then we're going to look at fear. We're going to blow these demons out of the water. We're going to be like green berets for Jesus. We're going to put explosives under them and blow the devil out of the water in the name of Jesus. We're going to do these things in the name of Jesus by the power of of the Holy Spirit, not by our own weapons, but by the weapons of our warfare, which are mighty through God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, we're going to be praying for you in a moment, and um, we just want to thank God for this message. I want you to read Isaiah 55, 17. Read it over and over and over again. Get it in your spirit. Memorize that scripture. Speak that word back to the devil when he tries to come upon you. Don't let anything or anybody. Hey, listen, listen. I mentioned your mama early. I mentioned your daddy. I'm not trying to be uh, disrespectful, but mama can't keep you out of heaven. Daddy can't keep you out of heaven. If they're speaking stuff that's not of the Lord, you try to get them saved. But don't let any relative any loved one, any friend, I don't care who they are, any preacher, any pastor, if they're not preaching the word of God, don't let them pull you away from Jesus. The devil is a liar. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We bind you by the authority of the name and blood of Jesus. We cast down every vain imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we uh, bring into captivity every thought obedient to Christ Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. You said whatsoever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And now we loose the Holy Spirit upon your people to live in us as rivers of living water. We lose faith. We lose joy, peace, happiness, meekness, self-control, gentleness, and the fruit of the Spirit. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to stop our recording. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings.